Hi everybody, I'm Brant English, Robust Tools, coming to you today from the heart of America's Dairyland, Barneveld, Wisconsin, and I'm so happy to have Colin Way and Nick Agar in our shop, and Colin's going to do a presentation on his woodworking wisdom. Thank you, thank you. Turn my, camera, turn my mic around a little bit. Yeah, thank you ever so much. Um, sharing um, that Brent. microphone. Where are we? We are in... Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Now, remember last time that I was here, well, I wasn't here. Last time we were doing um, a Woodworking Wisdom or a presentation from here, Brent was here. I was back in Axminster. So now it's really, really nice to be here in person. Yeah, last time I was here, we were doing it via Zooms. So it's yeah. nice to be kind of here together and uh, uh, getting on with life with uh, all that's gone behind us. And whilst I think about it, you know you've been on a diet since you got here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> As you can see. Um, just look, look down the road, Brent took us this amazing place where uh, they make these things called cheese curds. I'm not sure if the camera can see those. Um, but these are to be eaten fresh. And I'm just going to take one out. And you want a little one there? Or oh, you, no, yeah, no, okay. No. okay. It actually squeaks. I'm not sure you can see it. You can maybe even hear this. It squeaks. It's like having a mouthful of mice. It's awesome stuff, but <laughs> thanks, Brent. It's, uh, it's great to be here and in the, the, the center of the universe where they make these cheese curds. I'm going to get back around where I'm behind the cameras now where I belong so you can see what Colwyn's up to. Uh, over to you, my friend, on the American Beauty. Where it's made, <laughs> where else? What a beautiful place to be. Thanks, I'll see buddy. you in a minute. See you in a minute. Okay. Um, well... It's not very often, and I, I do have people saying to me, you've got a dream job. Yes, I do. It's not very often that I'm in the home of Robust Lathes, was this is my first time, and I've got a lathe that's fresh off the conveyor belt. Well, not conveyor belt. It's fresh off the hand-built belt. Um, this is the first time it's been used. I've just done a little bit of preparation to this timber blank, um, but... Yeah, this is me straight on this brand new machine. Um, we've got a bit of mesquite here, which is a, a, a common timber in the UK, uh, in the US, I would say, and we don't get it in the UK. Um, it, I have used it once before, and the idea today is I'm going to make a longish stem goblet, and the, I was going to make it fairly thin, sort of three mil. However, sorry, eighth of an inch in American. Um, but I've just parted some of this away, and I'm not sure whether the camera's going to pick it up. It's going to be quite difficult. But in parting it hot, uh, parting it off, you'll have to direct me, Nick. Is that okay? That's perfect. Um, in parting it off, the heart is running all the way through this piece. So it's a fairly small limb, and you've also got the crow's feet there. So those um, splits just running um, in three positions, one right the way through the heart of the piece. So I'm not going to do a thin sand goblet. We're going to we're going to do a um, uh, a shapely goblet let's put it that way we're going to do a nice figure on the uh, on the stem so we're going to make it fairly fairly long um, I'm going to hollow out from this side we've got a camera hopefully which I'm not going to get in the way of I will have to move it a little bit in a minute um, but yeah let's get on with our our goblet we've done a couple of goblets recently we've done one last week if you remember um, when we were at Aramont we done um, or Nick put his Viking slant on it with the it pewter. Was a chalice. Yeah, chalice. I kept saying goblet, egg cup anyway. Um, and that worked quite well. And I do apologize. We did have a few issues with sound, which we've hopefully corrected nowadays. We were louder now. than we were supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Who'd have ever thought so, it? On the road, you've got a couple of wood turners, not technicians. So um, here goes. So fingers crossed, we're going to get a nice goblet. This is a goblet. It's not a chalice. So it should be nice and delicate. Start the lathe. As low as it'll go, you know what I always say, go to zero, turn the lathe on. I've checked the chuck. We're using C jaws. Don't forget, this is the SK114. It's the American Beauty. Everything's running nice and smooth. I'm just going to start. We're going to take a little bit of diameter away from the, the top of the goblet and just rough down. It's, it's sort of rough down, but it's. I've had this on and off the lathe so many times. I just want to clean it up a little bit. So up with the lathe speed. Yes, the lathe is on. It is that quiet. And we're just going to run. Don't have a roughing gouge with me, so I'm just running the bowl gouge along the sedge. Just to clean it up.
I'm not going to make it overly deep. Again, there's a few things that I haven't brought with me. I don't have a, a drill chuck and things like that. Normally, I would like to put a hole down through the center as big as I could um, and then hollow out. The other thing I would like to say is look around me. Look around where I am. We've got headstocks of American Beauties on the shelf beside me. We've got some on the bench here just being worked. We've got tail stocks down here. So we're actually in the factory where these are built. So it is a real treat. So really, really lucky. I wish I could describe to you how this, this timber turns. It's got a slight waxiness to it. Um, which is nice it's turning quite well let me just move sounds pretty dry one out is, that, of is it way. really dry it is really dry it's um it came yeah, it can't from get texas much. wasn't it yes yes it was so it's done a bit of traveling around the u.s actually um but it's got a waxiness to it i want to try and sort of describe to you what it what it feels like almost like chestnut you know the feeling of chestnut it's got that sort of waxiness i haven't tried the the uh tilt away here i'm guessing we're all good to go oh look at that luxury. isn't that it is a lot you could right i there, don't Nick. know it's what i do without it now it's, it's a luxury spoil. so we're going to bring this around now i am experiencing expecting a little bit of vibration here that's not through the lathe that's through this timber it's got quite a resonance to it so we're going to start with a small Quarter inch if you're in the UK, three if you're in the US, bowl gouge. And I'm going to take small cuts. We're below center. Because we're getting vibration through the timber, I'm just being delicate. I don't want to throw anything out the chuck. I'm not sanding anything. So normally what I would be doing here is we'd be um, taking out the center, getting the shape that I want, then sand before bringing the tailstock back in and recreating the shape on the outside. Um, I'm not going to sand. I don't want to cover the, the workshop here in, in dust. Um, I just want to give you an idea of process in making one of these goblets. And I would say, if you've never made a goblet of length before, start fairly, start fairly um, shallow before you go to anything too long and slowly increase the length but small cuts vibration is not friendly to you in terms of a hold point on these and that bowl gouge has a 55 degree bevel on it if anybody's wondering So look, we're going to do a little OG. So we're going to come around on the convex at the top. Quite a long way. Before we come around the bottom. Now I am conscious I've got a camera on my right shoulder. We're okay. We're okay. okay. Just Nick, whilst I'm hollowing this out, just remind people of where we've been so far and where we're where heading. Where we've been so far? Well, we started off near in Savannah, Georgia, near my shop. We worked our way up then through um, Georgia, through Atlanta to Chattanooga for the AAW, where we met loads of wonderful people. For a lot of friends we haven't seen for a while and after that we went kind of horizontally across into Tennessee and um, uh, Gatlinburg where we uh, finished a two-week class teaching at Aramont in Gatlinburg and then after we'd finished at Aramont we went straight up through Kentucky uh, almost to Cincinnati, Ohio, and some of you will have seen maybe the firework display we saw there, where we went and uh, spent the day and interviewed our friend Keith Bundy, and we did actually do a woodworking wisdom from Keith's uh, shop. We then went on through um, uh, into Indiana, so we did through Ohio into Indiana, we stopped and said hello to our friends at Mark Adams School of Woodworking uh, and had lunch there. Then it was 
hightailing it on into Illinois to Chicago, where we stopped in and saw our friends at uh, Tormet US. Uh, had a great time with those guys. And uh, then we were, of course, fast on the road once more into Iowa. And we went to Lamont, Iowa, near a town called Manchester, funnily enough. And uh, saw uh, an uh, amazing man there um, uh, who owns some ornamental and rose engine lathes, which you may see if you hunt uh, around for us. Amazing visit. And of course, um, one of our sponsors uh, is Pizza Ranch. And we went and visited Pizza Ranch. Not only did you have good pizza and amazing chicken, <laughs> we actually, um, kindly by the owner, got outside and put a small lathe outside uh, the restaurant and uh, we had our name in lights, didn't we, Colwyn? Yeah, it was a real, real highlight. The first time we had our name in lights. So yeah. people were driving down the highway here tonight. Uh, Colwyn Way and Nick Agar uh, spinning tops uh, for the kids, and there was big kids. There was kids at least old as eighty-six, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Which, which was a great bunch of fun. That was fun and a little bit surreal at the same it time. It was. Yeah, like you say, the name on light in lights and uh, turning tops in the sunshine. What, we're at 34 degrees-ish? 32, yeah, 34 yeah, degrees? Yeah, possible sunburn issues there. Yeah. Although we hear back home in the UK, it's getting rather warm there too at the moment. Now, just, just to uh, let you know that the next woodworking business that we're going to be doing from the US, we're going to be looking at some sharpening and we want to sharpen. I know you've been asking questions about doing the, the signature skews or Colin Way signature skews. We're going to look at how to sharpen those on the Tormec because a lot of people assume that you can't. Nick, you're going to be doing some gouges as well, aren't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. What jigs are we going to be using? So oh, I'm we're using the multi jig. Something called the SVD186R, which is a fingernail grinding jig, and you're going to be using um, the SVS50, which is going to do your skews, which should uh, interest a lot of people for sure. Just checking on where that split's going, but um, I, I don't, don't know like if we making. We can see. We're having a look. We're trying to trying to catch up on you, but we, there's a little bit of a shadow in there, so we can't quite see it. For there's no light in there, but I know it's there. We, we yeah. showed it on the off cut. I don't like making excuses before I start, so I'm not going to. Um, it's all going to turn out brilliantly, and um, I'm it's working going to be with new timber and lovely. especially pieces that people have bought you. Um, um, you know, can sometimes be a challenge. But you know, it's, this is wood, woodworking wisdom and as live and raw as you can get. Okay, let me just, just gonna work out where I can go to safely. So we're down about, I tend to go about 40 millimeters, which is around about inch and a half. Okay, and that doesn't look much at this stage, but it will be when we start shaping, or when you start hollowing rather, that is actually quite quite a deep um, goblet. Don't forget we're going to have a little bit of wall thickness as well, and we're just going to bring the, the tailstock center in, the live center. Uh, if you're unsure about how tight to do it, the best thing to do is tighten up your tailstock center, and then just rotate your tailstock, um, your live center there, and if that can... Um, move the the piece on its own then you know you've got a good amount of pressure then you can tighten up because if you put loads of pressure on at this stage and your goblet uh, stem becomes thin you're going to start buckling it when you take away the the body of the timber here now don't forget the pressure is being supported by the chuck okay so don't assume because you're thin up here that that's got to take all the twist it'll only have to take the twist if you then start working above or tailstock end of the thin area so you can get quite thin at the tailstock as long as you work the left hand side headstock end of it you'll be absolutely fine so let's start shaping and i'm gonna first of all clear some of the rough away with the half inch bowl gouge and we're running there around about let's go about 15 about 1600 revs And remember, we've got a little OG going on, so I'm just going to recreate that shape. And you can periodically take the tail sock away just to check your thickness. One thing I've forgotten to do, let me just stop the lathe. I just want to put that mark back in and just do a little safety cut. 
just with a parting tool so I know how far to go. So we said about 40 mil, so about an inch and a, inch and a half. So there. I'm going to put a little, little cut with a parting tool in. So remember, give that a little twist. That's enough. I can see the line, so a little one eighth parting tool. And I'm not forgetting I've got three horrible little splits. right the way around I'm just going to stop the lathe again one more time just to see where those splits are and of course at this point you could stabilize it with super glue that'd be absolutely fine a little bit of super glue a little bit of accelerator make sure it's nice and dry before you turn the lathe on I think we're good there we are getting a little bit of vibration through the timber again but that'll be sanded away that's absolutely no problem whatsoever okay so again I'm just gonna put a little pencil mark and a cut where this goblet's going to end so let's go about there. So I'll just do a little indent, not too deep. Do that at this stage. If you try and do this once you've already formed the, the foot of the goblet, you will end up creating that burr. I don't know whether you, the camera can pick it up, but there's a little wavy or fluffy line there. We don't want that really. So let's go bigger gouge now. Let's get some of this timber gone. Remember, even though this is fairly delicate up here, the pressure's been taken on the chuck side, so we can take a big cut. Um, I'm going to stop again. I just want to, I know I'm a bit twitchy about it, I just want to double check that split. And it is going right the way Ooh. through here at the moment. So this goblet stem is actually going to be quite thick. So let's just put a little V cut in by the top of the goblet. thinner than it is at the moment and I'm just a bit worried about the split but we're just gonna go for it we're gonna go for it we're gonna hope for the best I can feel, I can feel this timber just chipping away at every cut I make. So let's stop and have another check. I normally wouldn't bother checking quite as much as I am, but look. Camera picked that up. Oh, We've yeah. got the heart running oh, all yeah. the way have, have through. Have a nice bit of bark down the middle, why don't you? So is that a pith, soft pith? That, that's a pith, yeah, Just to add pith. to the fun. So you've got soft pith and 
three crow's feet. No <laughs> challenge then, my friend. <laughs> There it goes, you might have heard that little ticking noise. Just it's nice sometimes shot. to have music blare in the background, but there are times like this, being able to hear what's going on is, is really important, isn't it? We're good, we're good. I think we're gonna be okay. There is a split there, but I think we're gonna turn past it. And do you know what? If if the split is still there, that's going to be the thickness of stem that we're using. It's not out of proportion at the moment. No, I mean, it's, I it's think up we'll, to you to double I think we're going to do that. It, you know? And we're going to try. So let's keep going. The other thing is, of course, you can stop this at any point. You could part the, the, the goblet off at this point. It doesn't matter. Carry on wherever you want. It's actually coming up a little bit, so I'm, I'm not saying that I'm running out of danger, but it's making life a little bit easier. So what I'm doing with the bowl gouge at the moment is just using the, the gouge as a skew. And I'm just using a shearing cut. And you can see the the lovely pattern on this. Well, not pattern, the the burnish that I've got going on the, the actual stem. It's working really nicely apart from those splits. So let's just give it a little bit of a skew. Just to iron everything out. People are holding their breath around us here and saying, make it shorter, make an egg cup. And it's reminded me, Colin, I had a, a friend I visited once and he had um, a few goblets with no feet on them, just the stem. And I said, what's going on there then? And he said, well, I had one break off and it was my wife's idea. She said, perfect, bring them to the beach. You know how your drinks always fall over the beach? So he made them puff, so he made them footless. And he took him down the beach and stuck him in the sand. <laughs> Off you go. So there's a get out clause could if you ever wanted sand, one. Yeah, a sand goblet. So it could be a sand goblet. <laughs> but it rarely works. Genius. Yeah. Genius. You can hear those little bits. You can hear as he passes over that little area there. It was a little bit more of a breakout. Let's I know. I think that's a knot as well. I think it's just oh, going to it's yes. playing with me now. With it all. Oh, it is another. Yes, they're not running all the way through it. Is it having a dulling effect on the tool yet? Or is it yeah. okay? It is? Yeah, straight away. <laughs> Great. Right, I think I'm probably pushing my luck. So I think this is going to be the length we're going to stop at, which is going to really please Brent over there because he's almost <laughs> ran away to the other side of the workshop. And that looks pretty good, actually, uh, proportionately. Now, there's a brave man who knows his tools going across there with the skew to clean up. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? But you'll see by the finish achieved uh, why he's done that in a moment. It is a finishing tool, the skew. So we, we were expecting to get a good finish. If anybody's worried about using the skew, practice, practice, and practice. It will become your friend. There we are. I'm only using pretty much most of this project has been with the the little quarter inch or three eight uh, bowl gouge quarter inch in the UK three eight in the US remember um, using that one to do most of the hollowing out and and the shaping and then this little three eight skew that's going to give me my definition 
and any decorated areas that I want to put in. I'm letting the timber do the talking, really. This is a pretty wood. So I'm not going to mess around with it too much. We put, we'll put a little bead in the bottom. Now, if you're rolling a bead here, I'm not going to try and roll a bead with a skew because what will happen, the grain of the timber will act as a tram line. We're not in the right orientation of grain to be able to roll with the skew. Um, so I'm just scraping that in and you can then sand that around to be absolutely perfect. For me, that stem's far too thick. I would like to go at least half of that thickness or decorate it. We know what the issues are with this bit of timber. But from that, hopefully you should have got an idea of the, um, the order of which to do things. Again, now you would sand that. But let's just put our mark in again with the parting tool. It's going to flare up a little bit, remember, like I said. So I'm going to have to just clean that edge up. This time I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Not forgetting we've got splits in the bottom. So there, I've gone in around about half inch, I would have thought. I'm just going to clean up this edge. Remember the burr? Okay, and then you would sand to a finish. So I think before we go any further, let's pretend we're going to sand. Like I said, I don't want to fill this lovely workshop up, this Rolls-Royce workshop up, um, or American Beauty workshop, with sawdust. It doesn't work well with all the wonderful tools here so i'm not going to sand we're going to pretend with sand i would tend to with these depending on whether you're going to use them or not go with either a melamine lacquer and uh, acrylic lacquer or even um, an epoxy if you're going to use them make sure you go food safe um, <coughs> excuse me but now we're going to part off so we're going to use a, a conventional parting tool i'm using a 1 8 here um, and then you can turn around use a wooden drive dog just to clean up that underside and then sand to a nice finish. We're going to not have the tailstock there when we get to the actual parting off. I'm going to get almost there. Then I want to take the tailstock away to finish the parting off process. If that makes you nervous, go down part way and then um, use a pull saw to saw off. Remember, you're going to turn it around to finish the base anyway. Right, we're there. So now my my left hand is going to be my tail stock because I'm right-handed. If you're right hand, if sorry, if you're left-handed, then your right hand would be the tail stock. So I'm just going to pull that up. I'm not turning the lathe off now. If you had a one-eighth stem, if you turn the lathe off, then restart it again with the tail stock there. That shearing action could be enough to split the the piece away. So all I want to do is just pull that out my way. I'm holding not gripping. If I grip, everything's going to get hot. I'm purposely, well, not purposely, but I will let go because my hand will get burnt. Is my hand in the right way? Can you see what's going on? So just using the, the hand to support everything. Look where my right hand is. I'm up right near the edge. I'm supporting what I'm doing. Be careful when you go into the passing cut as well as when you come out. You don't want to catch a corner because if you do, things will just Things will just break on you. So nice and delicate now. Don't push too hard. We want to be left with two to three mil little nib to, to clear out. And just stay calm. Just a little cut. Nice gentle pressure. And all that will happen, no drama here. All that's going to happen is it's going to stop in your fingers. So I'm down to about, there's about two mil down there at the moment. So... Any minute. There we are, and it just stops, like I say. Now, let me turn it around so you can see the nib that's left. Just to prove that there's not a big amount of, uh, of timber in my way now. And then all I would do that, I'd probably just nip that away. Then hold between centers. I'm not going to do it with this one because of the splits that you can see. And then just tidy this area up. You can then decorate it put um, um, some texture in there if you want to um, and certainly sand it and make it uh, make it yours there we are it's my, well, my my second mesquite goblet my other one was was in the u.s back in rally back in 2019 but uh, i hope that's given you an idea or sort of the the stages to go through to make your own goblet 
I would like to have had that at least half the thickness of that or at least decorated so give it some form we've got too much cracks and and lovely things like knots going um, on to be able to do that there we are I hope you've enjoyed that everybody don't forget, next time that we're going to be with you, we're going to be doing some sharpening on the Tormek. I'm going to be sharpening the Colwyn Way signature skew. Nick's going to, be, going to be doing some gouges also. So until next time, if you want to come in, Nick, just to say goodbye. I will do. Um, Brent, come on in. Just to say goodbye from Wisconsin this time. What was it the two used to Ronnie's used to say? And it's goodbye okay. from him and it's good goodbye. night from me. <laughs> but anyway, Brent, thanks for having us at the you know, heaven, you know, we've got the Sweet Sixteens, we've got the Scouts, we've got the American Beauties. Uh, it's going to be hard to get him out of here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we've got uh, bratwurst planned next. Bratwurst, bratwurst is a type of sausage. Yes, Ooh. and uh, that'll get him out of here. Oh, yeah, that will get him out of here. Thanks for having us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Brent. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>